The internet changed everything, and I mean everything. And that is especially true of model railroading. Today I'm going to be talking about how the internet changed the hobby and how it's leading model railroading into a renaissance on coffee and trains. Welcome everybody to another edition of Coffee and Trains. Before we begin, I'm drinking Black Rifle's Freedom Fuel and as always, black with two sugars. So today I want to talk about model railroading and its relationship with the internet, how the hobby has grown so much because of it, and why I think the hobby is about to enter a period sort of a renaissance time for it. So I'm going to break this down into three parts. The first two parts are how the internet changed it. And I'm going to be talking about the skills section and the community section of the hobby. And then I'm going to talk about why the hobby is looking so bright in the future. So let's get started. So the internet's really been around for about the last 25 to 30 years, uh, around that time frame, but it really became popular in the early to mid 90s. Now, before that, when you were looking for information on model railroading, you really had a few resources. You had magazines, periodicals, things like that. You had books, you had your local model railroad club if you had one, and your local hobby shop if you had one, and you could go to some train shows occasionally. That was about it in terms of your resources. And uh, that really kind of limited the amount of information that you could get out there. Not so many people could learn uh, different techniques techniques and different operation schemes like that. You know, in the late 80s and early 90s, you really had the VCR coming out and then the DVD coming out. So you could show trains operating and you could do things like that. But it really wasn't that widespread and information was just hard to get out to people that needed it and wanted it to run their model railroads in terms of techniques for scenery, techniques for operations, wiring, all sorts of things. And there was really this, this, this gap between the beginner model railroader and the expert model railroaded there, there was there was not a lot of in between there there were there were some people that we could kind of get settled in the middle but you really didn't have the wealth of information that you have today and that's what I want to talk about first and that is the skills portion of how the internet changed model railroading if you really look at it in the late 90s and early 2000s you had a lot of websites being published in regards to model railroading you have a lot of articles going online and things like that and a lot of people do learn that way but when model railroading really took off is when online video services came out the bottom line is is yes, you could produce videos and DVDs, but back then those were extremely expensive to produce. When you introduced the idea of simply making your own video and uploading it, it got a lot cheaper to make a video, which means that everybody with a model railroad could make their videos and upload them. You know, YouTube came around 2005, 2006 is really when it started to get hot. And people started to make videos for model railroading and show their model railroads and show different things they did to make their model railroads. And this was really when the internet began to change the hobby. I mean, really began to change the hobby. When you could watch someone else making something on a model railroad. You could see exactly what they did. You could see their hand movements. You could see how they shook things out, things like that, how they laid track, how they held track in places they were putting it together, how they, how they uh, trimmed wires and things like that. When you could see the actions and it was easily available for a very inexpensive price, basically the cost of your internet, that is really when model railroading really began to take off in terms of its wealth of information. It just began to grow and grow and grow from there. And we're not seeing that growth slow down. We're actually seeing it speed up more and more model railroading channels are coming out on YouTube as well as other places. There's more blogs coming out. I find new ones every day. That is the really amazing thing about about what the internet has done to the hobby. It's really just disseminated all of the skills and everything that you need to where you can watch them and you can learn them and people are making better model railroads because of it. Now, the other side of why the internet has changed the hobby so much is the community side. And I think I can just say it right now, look at us. I know that I have people watching from all over the world right now that I would have never met in a pre-internet age. And I thank you guys all so much for watching. I'm so happy that you guys are part of this community. But if you look at all of the Facebook groups, all of the Instagram accounts, 
all of these different things, all of the train forums, everything like that. You have this massive community that is built around this hobby that we all love. And we're really learning how expansive the hobby is exactly. And it's growing by leaps and bounds because of this. And part of that is also because of the generally positive attitude of model railroading. We're always looking to talk and help each other out. And that's one thing that I absolutely love about that hobby. So you combine that with the ability to communicate with people all around the world that's going to lead to explosive growth in the hobby and we're seeing some of that growth right now believe it or not i know a lot of people want to say that the hobby's in decline but that's simply not true as a matter of fact i want to talk about why the hobby is going into a renaissance so this model railroading renaissance i keep talking about let me tell you why it's happening it's happening because of the two things that i just talked about the amount of information in terms of skills you need and the community that is around it it's kind of a perfect storm to cause explosive growth in the hobby i have had more messages over the past year and a half about people just starting out in the hobby than i have ever before and it's continuing to increase at a phenomenal rate how many messages i'm getting about what scale should i pick what you know what do you recommend for a beginner in terms of a starter set people are looking to get into this hobby and that is because they're seeing this community and they're seeing all of the cool things that people are doing and that is because of all the skills that are more readily available to watch and learn and read and learn and also the support that you have from this community it's a tip of the hat to you guys because this community is overall very positive and that's part of the renaissance that we are seeing in it and it's just absolutely amazing to watch this hobby that in the past, yes, people have known what the hobby is, but more people are able to access and explore and have fun with the hobby. I have seen more detailed railroads come out year by year by year and more better looking railroads because people are getting those informations that they need. And it is absolutely astounding to watch. And I'm so happy to watch the model railroad hobby grow. We're really in the middle of a renaissance right now, guys. I know sometimes it may not feel like it, but think about the community that you have to reach out to. Think about the support you can reach out to. Think about the resources you have to go find the products that you need. Think about how you can directly talk to companies. Think about some of the smaller companies that wouldn't exist in the past because they were so niche. I mean, if you look at what I do with my few 3D printers, you know, 15 years ago, this wouldn't have been possible. So there's a lot of different things that are going on that are creating this model railroad renaissance, but it really centers around the amount of information that is out there and the amount of community that is out there and how much it has grown so tip of the hat you guys are really making this hobby grow all right guys let's go over some of the coffees that you guys are drinking and the first one I'm gonna list is a doozy I hope I say it right uh, Stephen Gibbs says Cafe Du Monde coffee and a chicory Vietnamese drip over sweetened condensed milk that is an intense coffee i've never well i have put that much effort into coffee but that that sounds like some delicious coffee let's see here who else do we have here joe raider says because i was drinking decaf last week because i was shooting in the evening he says decaf coffee that's like taking a shower in a raincoat <laughs> well i didn't want to be up all night i'd like to get some sleep so i can take care of my twins oh let's see here tom doe says pete's major dickinson's for the win all right another one to try out love me some pete's and scott eric cantilano says have you checked out hump brothers coffee they're a veteran owned and operated and every purchase goes to help veterans directly i've had all their flavors and i'm not disappointed one bit plus they are very local to me like right down the street i'll have to put that on my list of ones to try thanks scott so thank you guys so so much for watching thanks for all the support that you guys have given me over the past three years now it's kind of mind-blowing to me and i want to say a big thank you to all of my patrons they are listed right there you can become a patron for as little as one dollar a month also check out the etsy store i've got some stuff coming out real soon that's going to be pretty exciting so thank you guys so so much for watching until next time i'm jimmy from the diy and digital stay safe be kind drink some coffee and happy railroading